Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. 2021 Ram 1500, 50,000 miles, and customer complaint is, well, he's got these oversized tires on here, and a wheel bearing apparently went out. That caused the ABS system to fuss, wheel bearing was replaced, it was good for a day apparently, and now the same code is coming back for the front left wheel speed sensor. Here it is, C00311D, and the shop owner here wants me to tell him, is this aftermarket wheel hub defective? Um, because he doesn't want to do the job twice if that's not the problem. So what's the quickest and easiest way to determine if a wheel speed sensor is bad? Well, if the connector is easy to get to on the right and the left sides, we can just swap them around, meaning run wires from the uh, left front harness to the right front known good sensor, spin that wheel. If the signal's good, if it's happy, then we know it's a defective wheel hub uh, sensor assembly. So uh, let's go into live data, spin the wheels first, make sure we don't have a signal on the front left, and then uh, just swap the wires around and see if that makes a difference. So by the way, on the newer Chryslers, you are going to have to be connected to the internet on your scanner and be subscribed to AutoAuth. So right now we're online, so we can read the uh, live data and just look up speed. There, front, left front, right front, that's all we need. Let's graph that. Well, it's the left front showing 1,490 miles an hour. That's wrong. Um, but let's spin the wheels and see what happens. All right, so let's spin the left front wheel, see if there's any difference. The right front's definitely showing. Left front is MI8. Let's unplug the sensor and see if the code changes and if that data drops out. Okay, so sensor is unplugged. The uh, live data did not change. Let's see if the code changed at all. Nope, the code did not change. What we could do is plug in the original sensor, which uh, the shop owner still has, and see if that makes a difference. So definitely don't throw away your old parts until the truck or the vehicle is guaranteed fixed for a month. <laughs> so, good thing. We have this old hub and sensor assembly, so that's plugged in. Let's read the fault code. So it still says active, so let's try to clear it out. Yep. DTC is still present. Read fault code. Still, still the same code. Let's go back to data. Look at the speed. Uh, let's see here. Left front, right front. Still showing the same. And I'm going to spin the hub around. No difference. So that's interesting. Let's stretch some wires to the known good sensor on the other side and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so I unplugged the right front wheel speed sensor, so now we have both codes. Now let's stretch wires from the left vehicle harness to the right front good wheel speed sensor and see if this code goes away. Alright, using our AES Wave adapters, I got the harness on the left front side adapted to the sensor on the right front. So let's clear out the codes. I should say DTC is still present. Read fault code. Hmm. Both codes still present. And on data stream, right front and left front will probably be 1500 miles an hour. Okay, 
So, what do we just prove? There's a problem between the ABS module and this connector. And it's not reading any sensors. So, we need to go to the ABS module, look up a wiring diagram, do a visual inspection on the wiring harness, see if there's a break in the wire. So the EBS module conveniently lives right here. So let's, I blew off the connector, all the junk. Let's unplug it, key's off now. So we need a wiring diagram for this bulk connector. Maybe try to get that cover off, match up the wiring colors, and just do a resistance check from here to here. All right, thanks to all data, we have a nice wiring diagram, OE. We're going for the left front wheel speed sensor, so pins eight and nine at the ABS module. I got pin eight, front probe with a fine needle, don't spread the terminals. And then the other side of the ohmmeter is on the sensor side. And we have 0 0.3 ohms, you can wiggle the harness, Make sure that doesn't change, so that's good. Let's move the pin over to pin nine. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, right there. So that's fine. And move this to the other terminal. If you practice this one-handed. There we go, kilo ohms. So that's a problem. We definitely have a broken wire from the ABS module to the wheel speed sensor. Now, when we do the wiggle check, we'll see if the resistance is changing. Where is this break? 3.4 kilo ohms. So now all you have to do, maybe do a tug test. We know it's going to be this wire right here that's the green with the dark green that goes to pin 9 watch the ohm meter if we do a tuck test if we lose continuity or not nope so let me keep Tugging on these wires here. Um, actually, exposed them right here so we know which wire to tug. It's going to be the green with a dark green. I'm going to tug it right here. 3.5 kilo ohms still. Doesn't seem to be changing. Let's look at the harness going to the ABS connector. Hmm. So let's track the harness just visually from the ABS sensor down there. It goes to right there. That's where I exposed the, uh, the two wires. It goes into here. How does it make it to the ABS module, which is right down here? See this loom? It must go down there close to the frame rail and then up here by the fender behind the battery down here back to the ABS module so not a direct route so I have the ohm meter right here the ohm meter is showing something weird can't figure it out. Let's see, range 2.3 kilo ohms. I'm just going to gently, oh, there we go, 1 kilo ohm, 1.0. So somewhere down here by is it going to be in this area right here. Look at that. So making it better. I want to make it worse. 
0.3 0 did I fix it I don't want to fix it I want to break it all the way uh. Now is there an intermediate connector? Let's take another look at the diagram. I don't think there is. So on the diagram, there is an intermediate connector between the two harnesses here. And that's this one right here, XY201A. If I unclip it, that open circuit, let me clip it back in. 0 0.8, 1.0 kilo ohms. So now we can check the harness from here to the ABS module and then from here to the sensor. We could do that. Just unplug this. Pick out the right pin. We have a feeling the problem is going to be somewhere down here where it goes into that fat harness. We'll do a little more tugging on that wire. If the resistance is changing like that, it should be almost broken. Alright, so I'm noticing on the ohmmeter, if I lift this part of the harness up, the resistance reliably goes to zero. Right there, I can basically fix the circuit. Right there, zero. If I let it relax and kind of bounce it around, it will go back up. So is there a broken wire inside of that harness? <sighs> well, we gotta open it up. And it's gotta be the leg going to this connector right here. So I'm gonna open it up in a convenient spot. We'll do a tug test and hopefully the wire will just snap where it's broken. All right, we're going for the money shot. I exposed the harness right here. Here's the green and dark green wire. We're going to look at the ohm meter while tugging on the wire. See what happens here. Resistance is going up. That's stubborn. It's got to snap somewhere. No, nope, it's getting better. Worse. <laughs> I think if it's almost broken, it'd be it would just let go. Well, we can probe it right here and see if the problem is going up or going down. All right, so I'm measuring the resistance now from this wire to the ABS sensor. We have that three kilo ohms. That's bad. And if we move the probes around. Now let's measure from the ABS module to this spot. Should be perfect, right there, zero. Um, okay, so we're good through this connector, through here. The problem's gonna be between here and the sensor, so we're really close. We have it exposed right here too. We could probe from, from here to here. Let's, uh, let's try that. And we will seal these, these holes up because this environment is not uh, friendly. Alright, so we poked a hole right here. So the problem is from here, from this probe to this probe in this stretch. Should we just pull the wire really hard, see where, where it breaks? From this side, from this side. This is crazy, Bill. It's not breaking, but we know we know the wire is bad. Yes. All right. Well, the data doesn't lie. I unwrapped the harness right here at this bend. See that little green crusty? Right there. And when we snap it, I'm sure our ohmmeter will go to boom. Open circuit. Yep. Crazy. So, what? Why? Why did this happen? A variety of reasons. We have. A truck that lives on a dirt road so the mud and the dust packs into the harness and it becomes sandpaper and there's some suspension modifications this harness was not attached to the shock tower so it's bouncing around rubbing that wire through 
rub the little pinhole and if it's biased positive then the green crusties take over this thing is soaked in salt all winter long and uh, that's it so let's fix up that wire tape everything back up and this truck should be back on the road so people always ask in the comments what do I use to seal up the little pinholes from the probes on these wires I like to use just dielectric grease or silicone paste they fill in the little hole nicely and it sticks and it's water resistant so uh, there's no chance of water getting in by the insulation you know through that hole and causing more green crusties the liquid electrical tape I'm not a huge fan of it's messy and then it dries it can actually peel off which isn't very reliable but the silicone grease does not age or harden so make sure to find your pinhole first right there and just put a dab put a dab of dielectric grease right there make sure it goes into the hole and then we'll do the same thing right here and then we'll wrap that up nicely and how do you prevent future problems like this well you can't really because this harness is swimming in dust and salt we'll secure it to the factory stud so maybe it won't bounce around as much but that's all we can do um, to repair this truck alright we got our TS100 battery powered soldering iron warming up so shrink wrap nice clean copper right there let me just touch that up and we should be good to go get that in the shot Out. Look how fast that sucker warms up. Let's uh, do that right here. Preheat the wires. Beautiful. Do a little tug test. Put the shrink wrap right over. Tape everything up. Beautiful. And now, next shot, we'll plug everything in and make sure the wheel speed sensors are happy. All right, let's do a full code clear. And if that ABS is green, then we did a good job repairing the issue. Everything's plugged in, taped up. So we finish that and we'll go into live data, make sure the wheel speed sensors read fine. We're already in good shape. All right here we go. So both wheels are at zero miles an hour. Let's spin the right front. Yep. They're both showing since I guess the differential is where the drive shaft's locked, so good deal. That's a fix, Bill. I think you, you think you think the dealer would have found that one? No. No? No. No. <laughs> they would have said needs another sensor, then needs a module, and then maybe a harness. Right. That's that's how they do it. So that's proof right there. We're done with this ramp.